Next up in our list of uh, architectural styles is the layered architecture. And as the name suggests, we have a number of layers that are on top of each other. Um, and this is how we structure our system. And typical layers we might have is, for example, the user interface. Uh, we might have an authentication layer, authorization. Uh, we might have a business logic, so the actual functions that do something. Uh, and we might, for example, have the operating system or the database or other things that come in here. Uh, and the way the layered architecture works is that the upper layers only ever talk to the layer right uh, below it, so you're not allowed to jump over that. Uh, and the lower layers never call up, they just reply. So if I, for example, from the UI send an authentication request to the second layer, this layer answers that, but the layer will never by itself call the UI and say, please do something. So it's only reacting to input coming from above. So the way this works is simply that the requests are trickled down until the lowest layer. For example, if the UI needs something from the database, it will first go, th go through the authentication, then into the business logic, then to the database and back. Uh, so this is how the layered architecture works. Um, this is a common way to, for example, structure teams that you have the UI team, you have the authentication or some kind of security team, you have the business logic team and database team. You might have multiple of those, of course, so depending on how large your system is, you might have a, a number of teams here that do work, uh, but this is a very common way of structuring your organization. Um, now, advantages of the layered architecture are, for example, security. So it's rather easy to add security features at multiple levels. So you can in here, for example, insert a new layer uh, that has some kind of protection on the database or, I don't know, a firewall, whatever you n need. But you have these uh, possibilities to do that at several levels. Um, and, well, this is... Uh, a typical way of inserting things in general because the interface is fixed uh, on a more general level not just looking at security it's very easy to insert something new without having to change the system uh, as long as that layer that I insert in the middle is kind of using the same way to communicate the other two should not care about this so it should be in theory very easy to extend or to build on top uh, of an existing system so that's why it's uh, a very popular style to use. Um, there are, however, uh, a number of issues here. And one of them is, for example, that uh, it's quite difficult to get a nice performance. Because the requests have to go all the way through. They're not allowed to jump over. So this can easily take time if you have a lot of layers or if one of these layers is not very efficiently implemented. So performance is often a concern in these. Um, and in practice, uh, it is actually difficult to avoid these jumping over calls. So it's difficult to design this in a good way that uh, you have a pure layered style where you only call top down and you don't jump over layers. So in practice, it's not that easy. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, it's not only easy to build on top or add security layers in between, it's also easy, again in theory, to replace things. So if you figure out uh, that the authentication is, for example, outdated, uh, it should be fairly straightforward to implement a new one and just put it in here uh, without having to change the remaining system. So. That's another uh, good feature that you can simply take this out, put something else in, uh, and it should work. So that's known as uh, the layered architecture or layered system. And that's all I want to say for this style. Let's continue to the next one.